I would say third time's the charm when trying to start this episode of Starsick, but um, this is technically the fourth time. Though you had no way of knowing that, I just feel bad lying to my audience. Something that I have never done. Ever, really. And that's a guarantee from me right there. Although it would appear that the sky does not seem to agree with me. It was so bright and sunny earlier, but the minute I said that, it's just thunder clouds galore. Either way, hello everybody, and welcome back to Starsick. It feels so nice to say that again after just so long of not saying it. It has been quite some time since the last episode of this was, uh, well, since I sat down to record this, really. And because of that, you know, I've got the usual problem of not knowing where I left off, but also, I have an additional problem that I don't think I've had before, which is, as you can tell by my hotbar down below, I'm missing, well, to put it bluntly, everything. Uh, except for a stack of cobblestone that for some reason didn't delete, even though I put it in the trash slot. Uh, but that actually comes uh, hand in hand with, you know, the reason why my inventory is empty. And that is because Starsick and Anadonia are not the only series that I run on this server. I was, uh, I was gonna try and fly up to the Waystone to show you guys all of the different waypoints that I have for all of the different series that I run, but uh... I can't fly! Not only is my inventory empty, but my bauble's inventory is also gone. So I'm basically set back to ground zero. But either way, the point is, I run a lot of series on this server. And because I run a lot of series on this server, I have to put away my inventory for the different series that I run in a chest each time that I go to record another series. That way I don't accidentally bring items over from series that it you know, I'm far more advanced in, and it doesn't ruin the plot. But I have the slight dilemma of, since the last time I was here, oh, it's raining in a desert, how fantastical. But I have the issue of, since the last time I was here, I have gotten absolutely shit-faced drunk, and I don't remember <laughs> where I put the chest that has my inventory in it. So, uh, before we get into anything in today's episode, we are gonna go on quite the scavenger hunt that we basically have no choice but to succeed in, because, I mean, if we don't, I, I kinda just don't have any stuff anymore, so, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's quickly do that. I don't think it's any of these, but I might as well check just to be safe. Nope, 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 nope. I'm not even sure why I'm checking this one, but, you know, nope. Now, unless I want to walk about 5,000 blocks in that direction, I'm going to need to find a way to get up to the Ancrea waypoint, which I... This this really is the motivation I need to just move this to the ground. <laughs> uh, maybe this cobblestone's going to come in handy after all. Okay, we can either go to Fill 2, <laughs> Fill End, Guy's View, or the Chest Room. Now, that one's immediately off the table, because going there will crash my game and my recording software and... I think it will also shut down the server, because for some reason, mechanism windmills are very anti just being alive. I can't go to fill 2, because, you know, I know it's not there, I came from there, that's where, um... That's, that's, actually, I can't tell you what these two are from, because, uh, that series hasn't come out yet. So, just take my word for it that my stuff isn't there. So, I guess the next best place to have a look would be Guy's View, so, uh... Let's go. Yeah, there we go. I got my multi-jump boots. I got my uh, projectile protection eight pants. I've got my uh, unbreaking five shield. And, you know, I've got all my other stuff. All right, let's grab this stuff and then we can, be the we can begin the actual episode. You know, I'm just now organizing my inventory and I've only just noticed the splash potion of night vision. This isn't mine. <laughs> This belongs to Dr. Phil. I'm not sure why it's in my chest, but, you know, maybe it was a gift? What, I... It wasn't part of my original inventory, and I don't plan on taking it with me, because, you know, contrary to popular belief, I actually like doing things legitimately, so I will just leave that be in the basement. Right. Back to Ancrea. Okay, and with that, we are finally settled back at the village of Ancrea. I actually made a slight detour in between cuts there to go grab my large backpack back, as well as my swift horse ring, because I did accidentally leave them over at the place that I can't mention right now, uh, this place. Um, but now we have everything back, 
I mean, we can sleep first so that we don't have to deal with those guys, but then we can get on with the actual episode. So, for all of you lovely people that are watching this video right now, you will remember that in the last episode of Starsick, we put together this brand new crafting altar, the uh, Celestial Altar. And at the end of the episode, we left off with the promise that we would upgrade this thing far beyond its celestial nature to the very last upgrade available for the Celestial Altar. And so that is the very first thing, and potentially the only thing, that we are going to do in this session. My god, the Drifter is setting boundaries for his own videos? What is this? But yes, as strange as it might sound, I am actually putting a little bit of a barrier in place here, if you will, to, uh, for what I want to do in this episode that I don't want to go past, and that is for the simple reason that uh, for those of you that are quite attentive and take a look at those things, you'll see that the past two episodes of Starsick for me have been rather long. I want you to believe me when I say I have been trying my hardest to cut these sessions down into bite-sized episodes for you to enjoy, but no matter what I do, they just keep getting longer and longer, and I, I, I can't stop it. And so I'm hoping to change that by putting in place a limit on the amount of things I can do in a video. Now, as is tradition at this point, we are going to start this off by having a flick through our Astral Tome, simply because I don't actually remember the crafting recipe for the next level of Altar, and if you would have expected me to, then you are putting far too much stock in my ability to give a... I nearly said a demonetization word then, about uh, this crafting recipe. Okay, it's all flooding back to me now. I remember in the last episode, we unlocked this page of the Astral Tome, and this page tells us everything we need to upgrade our Celestial Altar, I believe it's now called, to our Iridescent Altar, which is... Uh, as far as I'm aware, the final step in the Starlight Crafting Altar tier list, I guess. Um, and to make it, I I'm remembering now, we needed these resonating gems and a celestial crystal, which is something that we have no idea how to make. So, let's figure that out, shall we? Now, if it's anything like the resonating gem, I'm going to assume we will also need a starlight infuser to create one of the uh, celestial crystals. But I do remember that this starlight infuser is paramount to being able to progress. So, we're gonna make this, and I believe we were actually in the process of making this, because in the center, there's a liquid starlight bucket, and there's a liquid starlight bucket waiting for us inside the celestial altar. So, assuming that past me was already working, I mean, I've got the marble pillars right here. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're, we're definitely working on this. Okay, with a bish bash and a bosh, we have the marble pillars in place, and we have the liquid starlight bucket. So, next up is we're going to get some ruined marble to put along the bottom. Now, haha. <laughs> I'm not as dumb, right? I'm not as dumb as some of you might take me for, alright? I know it took me a couple of sessions, but I, I do remember that you can actually craft the ruined marble and all the other marble variants now, so from this point forwards, that that's, that's not gonna be an issue. Although saying that, I don't think it was gonna be an issue, period, because I have 47 in my inventory, which somehow I just glossed over. So yeah, let's put those along there. Uh, what's next? Okay, that appears to do it for the marble side of things. Next up, we need some gold ingots. We need four of them. Two aquamarine and a piece of star metal. I think the only thing we don't have access to right now is the gold, but I'm also pretty sure I can just find that in a chest. So I'm gonna go grab those, and then we can continue with our little crafting escapade. I don't know how the hell you got in here, but you are most certainly not staying, alright? We don't take kind of to intruders, alright? I am so powerful! And boop. Yeah, shade is kind of messes with certain textures, I mean... It's, it's kind of obvious considering how much the chests are glowing, but uh... Anyway, gold. Right, I'm looking for gold. But while I look for gold, I just want to have sort of a one-on-one -on -one with you guys. Uh, a more- oh, dear lord! Okay, apparently the game did not like the idea of me having a one-on-one -on -one with you guys. Never mind. Oh, dear god! I will say the shader pack very much helps in finding it, because even though it looks kind of wonky uh, with specs, I have glowing ores enabled, 
So if it's a vanilla ore, like uh, that up there, I don't know what that is, I think it's gold as well. But if it's a vanilla ore, it will glow, so I'm actually able to find it pretty easily. Some may call it cheating, others would say shut your f mouth. Okay, this time around, I want to make sure I actually keep one of these so that I don't have to go mining again. So... Oh, I thought that was more gold then. That's just Electrum. Let's just put one here for safekeeping for now. And there we go. We can just pop the gold in here, I think? I'll have to check the book, but if it is there, then we got the exact amount we needed, which is honestly really satisfying. Oh, no. We actually had two more than we needed the aquamarine go there. But you know what? I... that's fine. I, I don't really mind. By the way, something you uh, eagle-eyed viewers may notice about today's episode, which is apparently today's catchphrase, is there's no time-lapse at the beginning of this episode, and that's... Well, I mean, it's because I don't have what I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> uh, I have been building a lot in my throne world to uh, add to this base. In fact, I'm going to be honest, I've basically done a complete overhaul of this design, but in doing so, it is taking a lot longer to get together everything that I want to, you know, cannon over into this world. Um, but yeah, because it's taking so long to actually build the new redesign, which I am very much confident it will be the last, I just didn't have anything ready for today's episode. That and the replay mod is kind of broken on me. I think I complained about that in the last episode, actually. But yeah, combining the fact that it's just not ready with the fact that the replay mod just isn't working for me, um, it might take me a little longer than usual to actually get a time lapse in. So there might not be one for the next couple of episodes, which, you know, to some of you, that'd be great. In fact, I know a certain that would really enjoy me having no time lapses in my video. This is a story that I've only really spoken about publicly inside my Discord server, link in the description. Um, but recently, my last episode of Starsick, the one that comes before this in the timeline, um, it got copyright claimed. Or actually, no, it wasn't this latest one, it was the one before that one that got copyright claimed. But the point is, one of my episodes of Starsick got copyright claimed. And the thing is, it's not a legitimate claim, just outright period, and I can prove it. And, you know, if I did use copyrighted material in one of my videos and someone decided to strike me for it, you know, that's really something that I'd just take on the chin at the end of the day, because, you know, at the end of the day, I would have breached copyright. I would be in the wrong. But this is the kicker. Even though I did technically break copyright, it's not the people that hold the copyright that are claiming me. For those of you that care, um, the music that I use in my time-lapse is quite obviously the Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach theme uh, that, that plays just like... It, well, I, I don't really know when it plays specifically, but it, it's literally just the Security Breach theme. It is the theme that you think of when someone says, Oh, Security Breach, you know? Like it's the, uh, it's the da 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 boo boo. But yeah, technically speaking, that is a copyrighted piece of material. As in, Steel Wool Studios, or whoever it is that composed the music, if they wanted to, would be fully within their right to claim my video. But, as has been the handshake agreement between YouTubers and game creators for the past nearly two centuries at this point, that's just not something that Steel Wool would do. It is a very well held up handshake agreement that people that make videos on video games will not get claimed for having the soundtrack to that game in their video. I can only think of a handful of times off the top of my head where game developers have outright said, we do not want this. And you know, that's all fine and good. At the end of the day, like I said, if Steel Wool or whoever composed the original music wanted to copyright claim my video, for using their music in my video, I would be absolutely fine with that. The issue comes in that it's not Steel Wool or the original composer of the music that has claimed my video. Instead, I got claimed by this random musician from... Off the top of my head, I think they're from Scandinavia? But to be honest, I don't give enough of a about them to actually check. 
And one of the reasons I don't respect him enough to actually look up where he's from is simply because he, the reason he's claiming my video is because he's claiming that I used his cover of the actual security breach theme. I am being claimed for using a cover of the music when that's just objectively wrong. I used the original music from the game. And it's only in this video that I have been claimed for using the theme. If it was an automatic claim, I could just go, you know, oh, this was clearly a mistake, you know, his label is just picking up the actual theme that he covered as his work and auto-claiming it. But it was just this one video, when I have used the security breach theme in every video that I have made a time-lapse in for this series. Except for maybe one, I think. And, and even then, that is an insane amount, right? If this was an auto-claim, it would have struck all of them. But as you can probably tell, it was just this one. And I have been waiting for nearly a month for this guy to repeal the copyright claim, because I put in a dispute. I even sent the f***er a DM on Instagram asking him why he'd claimed the video when it was content that he didn't own. Or I guess when phrased like that, it sounds slightly, you know, hypocritical. I should rephrase that. When it wasn't his cover. But, you know, it's been a month later and I still haven't gotten a response. I'm in the last week now, thankfully, of, you know, b having that video claimed, but I'm just sat on my hands basically, waiting for either him to do nothing and for me to get the money that is rightfully mine from that video, or for him on the last day to say, nah, nah, that is my cover, even though it's objectively not his cover. Oh, no, so I think I think I got a bit off topic with that one. I've been sitting on that for so long, but f if for some reason you are watching Mr. Musician, I want you to know that these following words come from the bottom of my heart. Go f yourself, you f uh. But either way, with all of that sort of out of the way, uh, I believe we actually have the finished recipe ready and raring to go inside of our Celestial Altar. Let's do one final check. Yeah, we've got the Aquamarine, we've got the Gold, we've got the Liquid Starlight. Uh, we've got the extra gold down here, we've got the ruined marble, and we have the pillars. Which means that the last thing that we need to wait on is for it to turn night time. Which thankfully it looks like it will in the next couple of minutes. So while we wait, I just do want to quickly go over my plans for, well, I guess this, this, this altar, I, I suppose. Um, I know in the last episode I said I was gonna go into the game files and change just how far away these can be. Uh, instead of having to move them, like, I, I think a block closer, because I liked the fact that it was all equidistant. But I actually had a look in the files, and there's just no option to change how far away these things can be. Which is either an oversight on the mod developer's uh, end, or it just wasn't something that they seemed, they deemed important, and because of that they just never included an easy option. And I don't know enough about mod making to be able to change it myself without just, you know, being able to flip a number from, like, uh, 1 to 0 or whatever. Either way, because of that, it means I can't actually go into the files and change how far away these are, can be from the altar block. So while I wait for night time, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to push these a block forwards, like these, uh, I guess, row ones. Not the ones at an angle, but the actual... Uh, row ones. It won't matter in the end, because this, like I said, this isn't going to stay here, but, you know, it gives me something to do while I wait for the sun to set. The moon is now in the air, or at least it's very soon going to be, and the sun has set on Balamori. This isn't Balamori, but that does mean that we can finally craft this, uh, thing that I've completely forgotten the name of. So let's grab our wand, let's do our classical a bippity boppity a booyah. Oh my god! Okay, well... Oh my god! That was so beautiful! I, 
I genuinely wasn't expecting that. That that actually caught me off guard. Oh, I didn't realize that the Celestial Altar like had it had its own like cool custom animations. I didn't think that came in the in the mod until like way later. Oh, that was so pretty. Oh, that that actually made me feel really warm inside. But there we go. We now have the Starlight Infuser. So the next step in this long scheme of steps is to go over here with the rest of our crap and to build the actual altar. So let's see what it takes to build, shall we? Oh, this is going to be so needlessly complicated. Okay, let's clear out an area. Let's clear out a goddamn area. I do like your hat. Oh, I didn't drop it. I, I genuinely don't know how I, like, even managed to survive without the ability to fly. Where did that go? All I did was click on you, and I'm pretty sure I just saw you go into the condenser. Which should physically be impossible since I wasn't holding shift, but... Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna get mad. I'm not gonna get angry. That's not me anymore. I don't get angry. I just go. I, I go back and I, I grab the other pillar, and then I try that again. And if it happens again, then I get angry. I go absolutely ape shit and I kill everyone. You ever wonder if the Starlight Infuser gets a little um self-conscious about the size of their pillars? I mean, compared to their older brothers, you know that their pillars aren't exactly very tall. Um, it's all right. It, it'll get bigger as you get older. Um. Oh, you're you're an adult. <laughs> but either way, with that poor tasting joke aside, this Starlight Infuser is now fully built. It has its base in place. It is ready to be used and abused. Now, in the last episode, I said that this was probably like several basins surrounding this. But now, I'm almost thinking that it's, uh, you, you fill these, uh, missing blocks with the starlight, almost as like a, a gutter, and then it takes the starlight out of the starlight gutters to infuse them into the, uh, aquamarine crystals. Now, I could be wrong, it could still require me to put basins in here, but running off of the, uh, assumability? Assumption. Why did I forget the word assumption? But running off of the assumption that it's just raw starlight it needs? Uh, I have no idea how much is in here. We're gonna need to find a bucket. Okay, moment of truth. Do we have enough starlight in here for one whole bucket? What is being attracted to me? Well, need it be said? The joke kind of just writes itself at this point. Uh, splish. Oh. In fact, it looks like we had just enough for one bucket, which is not great considering we need 3, 6, 9, 12 of them. But we haven't done this in a while, so what we can do is we can spend... Oh god, that's bright. We can spend this next night cycle just basically collecting as much liquid starlight as we can. But yeah, that means until the next night comes around, we can't really make any more progress on this uh, starlight infusion tab of things. But, while I was waiting for the thing to fill up, I have been reading uh, a bunch of these different sort of branching uh, paths and what they're all used for. And I've discovered quite a bit, the first being that we are finally smart enough to be able to craft our own uh, collector crystals, which, again, I'm pretty sure is a really big deal. Could be wrong, because I it's been that long since I've used them that I don't actually remember what the point of them is. Uh, but I know it's a big deal for the specific purpose that we're crafting things that up until this point We are unable to move or collect or mine in general uh, The next part is the enhanced collector crystals. I don't believe it tells me how to make these But it does show me how to turn them on I'm assuming which is you know We build another one of these weird looking bowl sort of pedestals like we have over there just with a different design and assumably putting the enhanced collector crystal on top means that it will turn on when it meets the requirements that it needs, which is... Uh, again, I, I just read this, but I'm not entirely sure. I believe it's when the constellation that it's linked to is in the sky, it produces like twice as much as uh, one of these, 
Uh, with the drawback that when its constellation is not in the sky, it produces about half of one of these. And then also we have the different lenses over here, which I'm not entirely sure how to use. Assumably, once again, we uh, shoot like uh, focused starlight at them from a collector crystal, and then when it goes through the lens, the, the, the resulting uh, effect is applied to whatever it touches. Like, there's there's breaking, which uh, I, I'm guessing breaks whatever block it's aimed at. Then there's ignition, which obviously sets things on fire. There's harm, which I'm guessing is just straight up damage. Um, and then you've got push, which pushes things. Uh, regeneration, growth, and spectral. The only one I don't know out of all of these, what it does is spectral. So I'm going to have a quick look at this. Uh, do -do 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 Oh! Oh, now that is cool. In fact, this is going to be instrumental in the next part of our base. Because, uh, spoiler alert, a lot of our base, after this new rework that I'm working on, is going to be underground. I sort of took the whole basement idea and ran with it, and now our entire base is going to be a basement. It, it looks a lot cooler than it sounds, but yeah. So we're going to need a way to channel starlight through the floor. Because, while there is, and I'll show you this now, there is a game rule to uh, to do with um, Astral Sorcery that allows you to use uh, Astral Sorcery structures without, like, access to the sky. Because it, it's a big thing in Astral Sorcery, right? You need to be able to see the sky, because, you know, you need to be able to see the stars. Uh, but there is a game rule to turn that off, so you can just build these massive structures and stuff underground. But I don't want to have to do that if I can help it. I would much rather go the natural path of using the spectral lens to shoot starlight through the floor. Uh, but yeah, I'll need to read up on more how to use this, because again, I'm just guessing using information I have at hand. I haven't really researched into this beyond that. But yeah, that's probably going to be where we go next once we have our base sorted. You know what, while I'm standing around here waiting for this to actually fill up, I've just had a rather big epiphany. I have no idea if this is going to help or not, but now that I think about it, it would really, really benefit us in the long run if it did. Again, I have no idea if this is going to work, but it's worth trying. If I hop back into the Anadonia Shack, does the Watch of Flowing Time affect the rate at which the Collector Foci actually, like, uh, gets Starlight? Because if it does, we might have just found a very powerful exploit. And you know what? I know I was just saying I don't know if it does for 100%. I'm pretty sure, in my throne world, I have built one of these, like, automa automatic Starlight collecting units before, and I used the Watch of Flowing Time successfully, which means, if I put this down... Look at that. It is going so much faster. Oh, I can't believe I didn't think about this before. This would have been so helpful. Oh my god, okay, let's let's grab let's grab our bucket before all of this shatters from the speed at which it's spinning. Oh my god, this was so much quicker. This is literally the last bucket. And it broke on the last bucket. This this was such a good idea. I cannot believe I didn't think of this earlier. Oh my god. And you know what? After all of that, we have the perfect amount of aquamarine left in order to build and upgrade our Starlight Altar, or our Celestial Altar, I suppose it's called now, to the final tier. All we have to do is drop this one Akma... All we have to do is drop this Aquamarine onto the Starlight Infuser. Fingers crossed it doesn't take up any of this Starlight, because if it doesn't, that means we can just put the next one on and we can get two of these. If it does, we will have to go through the whole process of getting all of this starlight again, but now that we know that the Watch of Flowing Time works, or rather, now that we've remembered that the Watch of Flowing Time works, we can just go get more aquamarine and get more starlight and, you know, either way, BAM! I was expecting something a little more climactic than that, gonna be honest. Do I just leave it here, or do I do I give it a bippity boppity boo? Oh, I do. Oh, I ex 
accidentally took a screenshot. <laughs> oh, not only was that so pretty, we also got so lucky in that it took none of the liquid starlight, which means we can just go ahead and plonk our last aquamarine on top here. But, you know what? I think I'm just going to wait for night again anyway. Because I know it's like a pain in the ass to wait for night time or whatever, but if it looked that pretty in the daytime, I genuinely really want to see what this looks like at night. Okay, the sun is down. It's now time to get down with our funky little aquamarine. I did forget how just blown out the starlight, like the liquid starlight can be, but I'm hoping that doesn't ruin the effects of the actual, like, uh... I, I don't know what you'd call it, the, the VFX, the spell FX, I don't know. But yeah, let's get ready in three, two, one. Sorry, I forgot, I forgot where my resonating one was. Boom! You know what? That was definitely worth the wait. I genuinely really liked that, and I'm pretty sure... Yeah, it did. It actually just straight up consumed uh, one of the pieces of liquid starlight, which, you know, considering only one piece got took, that's actually a really good deal. But that doesn't really matter, because we don't have to use this for a while now, because we have our resonating gem. So, if we hop back over to the book... Ah... Uh... Okay, so I was kind of off the mark. We actually need four resonating gems to be able to craft the iridescent altar. And I also forgot that we need a celestial crystal. And while I know how to make uh, enhanced collector crystals or whatever now, I don't actually know how to make celestial crystals. And you know what? I think that's a little too advanced for my pea brain to get into right now. So if you can believe it, I'm actually going to call an end to the video right now. But yeah, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you like me and if you like my content and you like the channel, hit subscribe so you're notified whenever I upload. Uh, if you want to tell me something about, I don't know, how your day went, or if you want to make a, make a remark about my building skills or my, my editing skills or whatever, if you just want to say hi at the end of the day, don't be afraid to drop a comment because I read all of them. And you know what? I'll admit it, I like reading them. It gives me validation. Uh, <laughs> and if you absolutely love me to the point where you want to get married to me and you want to kiss me and you want to make out and you want to go, mwah, 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 Drifter, you're so nice and lovely, mwah, 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 uh, you can join the Discord server down below. <laughs> what the fuck was that? You know, I, I'm just dragging it on at this point. In case I don't see you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. I'll see you later, guys. Peace!